No Canadian Prime Minister has an unblemished record on Indigenous issues. That's true for Brian Mulroney. But there's many First Nations, Inuit and Métis, who remember him fondly. It was so friendly, so easygoing. Made it feel like he was just one of the one of the group, one of the friends around the table. To many Métis, Mulroney is revered for officially recognizing the Red River Métis, and Louis Riel is the founder of Manitoba. But just being recognized meant so much to us, and we never forgot that. But Mulroney's legacy for others is defined by his response to the 1990 Ganesatage resistance, known to many as the Oka Crisis. A 78-day standoff near Montreal between Ganesatage land defenders and the Quebec government over a golf course expansion on Mohawk territory. Canadians need to understand that uh, the events of the summer of 1990 were a major watershed in Indigenous settler relations. Tensions boiled over with the killing of a Quebec provincial police officer during a morning raid. Hundreds of Mohawk civilians were injured. Eventually, the army was called in, the project was cancelled, and the land was purchased by the federal government. He sort of used the, the Oka crisis as a way to flex his, uh, his muscle and also, I think, uh, to intimidate Indigenous land defenders to, to teach them a lesson that Canada is still a colonial country uh, and, and the colonizers are still in control. That's in contrast to how Mulroney may have been perceived on the world stage, standing up for the oppressed and against apartheid. I think a lot of people around the world thought, is this Canada the, the peaceful, tolerant, multicultural uh, country? You, you can't um, uphold that image internationally um, and be sending uh, the army um, you know, into to resolve a dispute that could be dealt with diplomatically. After Oka, Mulroney established the Royal Commission on Aboriginal People to improve the lives of Indigenous people and Canada's relationship with them. Mulroney saw it as a political play to make it look like he was doing something, knowing full well that he, given the popularity polls at the time, knowing full well that he wouldn't be in charge when, when the Royal Commission finally releases its report in 1996, which he wasn't. Right. That report, though, signaled that Canada's relationship with Indigenous people needed to change. It offered a blueprint. I think um, much of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's recommendations um, are, are packaged RCAP recommendations. Um, so it, it provides this sort of blueprint uh, for moving Canada and Indigenous people together. Mulroney also paved the way for changing Canada's north. He spent years negotiating the terms for the creation of Nunavut with territorial leaders signing it into being one of his last acts as prime minister. It is a vision that we had and he gave it to us. And uh, we are forever grateful for, for the actions that he took when he signed the Nunavut Land Claims Agreement. As all Canadians reflect on Mulroney's impact on the country, Sean Carleton sees an opportunity to take the full measure of our leader's legacies. I think this is exactly the time to complicate the way that we understand someone's political legacy. And the argument that I've been making is that if politicians don't like that, then I think we need to realize that you have the opportunity to craft your legacy in the moment. Brian Mulroney's legacy on Indigenous issues inspires both pride and resentment among different groups of Indigenous Canadians. Reflecting that, as we reflect on him, is now part of our shared journey towards reconciliation. Melissa Ridgen, Global News, Winnipeg.